Hello, hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to Cairns. I am Sam from Plant Collector Melbourne in Melbourne. And today we are at the Cairns Botanical Garden where we are going to be doing an Aroid tour. I'm so excited. This intention of this video is to leisurely stroll through the Botanical Gardens. There are so many treasures here that have been here for years and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So without further ado, let's get in here. Let's take a stroll. So here we are, we are right in front of the conservatory, which is my personal favorite part of the botanical gardens because this is where all the secret, beautiful, amazing aroids lie. So come with me, let's open this beautiful conservatory and show you all the beautiful aroids. After you. Alrighty, so when you first come in to the conservatory, you get greeted by these incredible plants. So come in close. This right here is actually one of my favorites and it's so awesome that it starts so early when you come in. So this is an Anthurium Wendlingerii. I know of two, which is the curled spadex one, but there is also something called the straight spadex. So one of the best features I think for this Anthurium is that it's got a curved spadex and it spirals so we will definitely get a close-up of that because I think it's one of the most unique traits of this plant but also that it's very bullate it's very textured um, and is very dark and you can kind of see it when we go over on this side this is a anthurium vitarifolium which is a little bit greener um, it's a little bit thinner um, and you can see here that they've actually got some berries. So I'm not going to touch the plant because you're not supposed to be touching the plants in the conservatory. But here we've got some berries, which is really cool. Hopefully you can see the really pinkish, reddish color of that. But um, these plants are magnificent. They are like pendant anthuriums. They are one of my absolute favorites. So we've got other pendant ones in the back. I'm not 100% sure exactly what that one is in the back. I have a feeling it's an anthurium penduliflorum, but I might be wrong. Um, but it is super beautiful. So usually I don't like tassel ferns, but this is starting to make me like tassel ferns. I don't even know what it is, what it's called. There is no tag, unfortunately, but when we were walking through the gardens this time around, this one was definitely eye-catching. And one of the reasons why I think um, the group and I really love it is because it almost looks like an umbrella. And I don't think that we've seen one quite like this before. So looking around, this one is definitely the standout to us. And it, in my mind, it is just, it is so beautiful. So this one is actually a plant that has captured majority of our hearts for the people that have been here visiting in Cairns. And this one is best oh, known as the Anna Velvet. So this one has some really interesting stories behind it. Um, it's actually a 40 year old plant that they believe to be a species and has been in collections over 40 years. Um, unfortunately, we don't know exactly what it is, but it's got some pretty special history. It is one beautiful anthurium that we definitely want to um, capture to show you guys because we find it super special in our hearts. There's not many of them in Australia, so they've been in collections um, and is not very much in abundance. So it is very special and quite rare. And that's one of the reasons why I think it is a perfect plant to be in the botanical gardens. Alrighty, another one that is one of my top favorites. I probably couldn't choose between this one and the Wind Lingerie, but 
Isn't it stunning? So this guy has another beautiful, beautiful history. It's Anthurium Purple Mama, which is a beautiful hybrid that Chris Hall did with Arden. Um, I don't know how long it's been in the conservatory, but I have a feeling it's been a long time because look at the size of this thing. So it's got incredible veins. The color is insane. Um, and just the mass like it's just such a big plant it, I think it is one of the most magnificent things that you have to see uh, when you come to the botanical gardens so there's a couple of these in the botanical gardens this one is my favorite there's probably about two three more uh, this is the biggest one and uh, I'm really little so it might look even more uh, big than what it actually is so I recommend you come down to the actual botanical gardens to see it yourself because yeah the comparison is is crazy <laughs> so one thing that i would really love to emphasize on the internet on social media um, is that nature has its way its own course and i think that a lot of the time we can get bogged down on when our plants are not looking perfect um, and one thing that i would like to show you guys is this beautiful yellow leaf that has by nature said you know what i'm getting a bit old and i'm a bit tired so let's just get rid of it I would love for the perception of yellow leaves to be a bit different. I think that yellow leaves sometimes make, you may say, oh my God, the plant is sick, the plant is not okay. Um, but this is more of a course of age. Um, and I would love to see people start to look at it as more something that is beautiful, that is um, by design a natural thing so let's get a good close-up on this yellow leaf because I still think it is fabulous. So two collectors that I hold very close to my heart have taught me about these yellowing leaves and the word sinensis which is the process of leaf deterioration due to old age. So right next door to the purple velvet, actually, let's take time to listen to the beautiful birds that I can hear outside the conservatory. I highly recommend when you're coming in to really take in the atmosphere. It is beautiful in here. The sounds, they have beautiful misters that are so fine that you can barely feel, um, feel it on your skin. Um, we, when we first came in, it was such a beautiful experience. I highly, highly recommend um, when you are here to try and be around and listen and take in the whole experience. But right next to the ma purple mama, we've got here, which is called the Cirrhistus mirabellus. This one is one of my favorites because mostly you find this really small and immature and it kind of looks different. But in time, People think that as it matures, it doesn't get sexier. I think it gets sexier. The fenestrations on this thing is just so bizarre and I don't think I've ever seen it on a different plant. Um, the patterns are sick. Um, the only thing is that it grows really slow. So I've actually killed one of these in the past because I was like, why are you growing so slow? Um, I piffed it outside out of the greenhouse and unfortunately it passed away. But it doesn't mean I don't want another one. Uh, this one is definitely one of my favorites that I'd probably get back in my collection at some point. So while you're walking around, you will find some beautiful palms. And again, I particularly haven't liked palms in the past, but after this trip, I think I'm gonna be liking them a little bit more. So here are some beautiful palms. I believe they're called cordata. Um, they've got some beautiful texture to them. So I find them incredibly beautiful, even though normally it's not my taste. This one is a classic. So I feel like a lot of people have this plant or it kind of dropped off a little bit after it entered TC. But in my mind, this is one of the best plants. So this is Alocasia um, Velvet, or I think it's called, oh, I can never pronounce it. It starts with M. We'll put it on the screen. But this guy has pretty much everything that I look for in Alocasia. It is velvety. It has a great um, veins. They're so contrastly beautiful um, the only thing is that I probably don't grow it as well as I could in Melbourne because it gets a bit cold and they go dormant but nonetheless it is a beautiful thing and every time that in my collection that it comes back to life after winter it is it is a sight to see I love this plant Alrighty, so this one I think catches my eye all the time. So I believe this one's called Caladium lindinii, but I'm not sure whether this is that's like the reclassified 
um, real name or if it's the old name. But we will do our research and possibly put it um, down below. But this guy to me stands out as well because the veins are so beautiful. The shape is so interesting. You can actually find this in Melbourne in some of the stores. Um, so it's actually quite abundant um, and available for everyone. It's not particularly rare, but I think it's particularly beautiful. <laughs> there is no doubt some of you, if you've been to the botanical gardens before, know that I was going to talk about this one. So this one is believed to be one of the black sensations here in Australia. So supposedly there's a couple of forms. Um, this is actually trying to be identified properly and documented um, officially. So what we do know so far is that this could potentially be uh, a VGI magnificum, but they're still trying to figure it out. Um, I particularly love this one here because because it is really dark it is really beautiful and this one looks like it's been here for a long long time I don't know how many years it's been here um, but this one to me looks like a really mature form I don't actually know how long it's been here in the gardens um, but it is really beautiful and so if you're ever looking for it in the botanical gardens look out for these beautiful Mickey Mouse um, plants and you're not too far off from finding the black sensation and if we go closer, so here we actually get to see two inflorescents, which we'll show you, which is a pretty spectacular uh, part of the plant. It's actually the reproductive um, system of an anthurium we have here. So the structure that we have here is called an inflorescence. So there's a misconception that this whole thing is one individual flower, but in fact, this actually has multiple flowers in that um, spadex. So this section here is what we call the spadex and here this little leaf here is called a um, spathe. All right, this one is no uh, stranger to the plant world. These are some big, big favorites that I think almost everyone um, that loves aroids loves um, just because of the really unique structures and the amazingness and how huge they can get. So hidden behind this humongous purple mama, you will find yourself a Anthurium waraquienum or the queen herself and sitting right next to the queen of course you got to have the king right so we have the Anthurium vici as well so I think one of the reasons why they love this guy or I should say the queen is that it's got beautiful velvet leaves it can grow enormous um, and the veins are spectacular and then you've got the vici which um, the veins what we call the ribs of the plant um, they're just so outrageously different they're distinct they're amazing so they've placed them both next to each other which I kind of not kind of I really like <laughs> but as you can probably tell anthuriums are definitely my weak point Alrighty, my friends, that pretty much wraps up the tour, the leisurely tour of going through the botanical gardens. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, taking a look at all these beautiful plants. I couldn't recommend enough that if you are an Aroid lover, I think you need to come into the botanical gardens in Cairns and take a look at these magnificent plants. But that is pretty much it for the day. Thank you so, so much. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Also, a massive special thank you to my camera lady, my production lady, Leanne, who is just behind the camera. And we hope that this video um, does justice to the beautiful uh, botanical gardens and all of the people that are involved in it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.